Hello everybody, I'm Sandy Lene. Thank you for watching Psychic Creations. We have a very interesting show for you today. In fact, the show's even got a theme. It is called Music is the Heart of the Soul. Isn't that cool? Now, many of you know that I am a psychic and I use stones as my tool to give intuitive readings. But did you know that every stone has got a musical note? It's really cool. And there's also a color that's association with the stone for each do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, ha note. <laughs> it's really cool. For an example, do is red and the ruby is used for its association. Re is orange and a fire opal is used for its association. Mi is yellow and a citrine can be used for the relation. Fa is green and jade can be used for the connection. Now so is blue and lapis can be used for the association. La is indigo and sujolite can be used for the relation. T is lavender and an amethyst can be used for the connection. Now we're back up to the top scale note which is do and that is white and clear and a rock crystal can be used for the association. Isn't that cool? <laughs> I just love that. I have my cheat sheets here with me too because I'm horrible at trying to memorize anything. Now also, this is really cool. Do you know that stones have their own musical note in association with a stone and astrology signs? Check this out. <laughs> this is really cool. Okay, the Virgo is accompanied by the Peridot and the C note. Libra is accompanied by the emerald and the D note. Scorpio is accompanied by the aquamarine and the E note. Now Sagittarian is accompanied by the sapphire and the F note. Capricorn is accompanied by tanzanite and the G note. Aquarius is accompanied by the sujolite and the A note. Now Pisces is accompanied by the spinel and B note. Now Aries is accompanied by the garnet and the D flat note. Where Taurus is accompanied by the carnelian and the E flat note. Now, Gemini is, is uh, accompanied by the crocolite and the F-sharp note. Cancer is accompanied by the citrine and the A-flat note. And last but not least is Leo, and that's accompanied by the chrysoberyl and the B-flat note. Isn't that cool? Now, if you are musically inclined, give this a try. Play a chord of all of your family members, you know the astrology sign, of your family members and or friends, you, you are going to be amazed at either the harmony or the discord that playing these notes together all makes. It's, it's incredible. It's really a lot of fun. So there is a saying, music is what feelings sound like. Now, after a short break here, I'm going to be introducing you to an entertainer where this saying is so true. Hi, and welcome back to Psychic Creations Music. Mm. What better way to express yourself, to share your emotions and relay thoughts? I have a guest today where she happens to communicate all three of these in her fabulous music. Please welcome musical entertainer and star, Lacey J. Dalton. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Hi, you guys. Hi, everybody. Welcome, Lacey. It is an honor to have you on this show. I am honored to be here, oh, yeah. and I'm honored to be playing to the audience of Sandy. Oh. <laughs> 
Well, thank you. Because you know you got to be conscious people out there to be watching this show. That's all there is to it. Oh, that's a nice thing to say. Thank ah. you. Well, I hope you don't mind, but I'd like to ask you a few questions about you and your music so the viewers can get a fuller view of just who Lacey J. Dog is. <laughs> is that okay with you? Are you sure they want to know this? Well, I, <laughs> Do you yeah. think they'll still love me after I... I think they will love you even more. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, let's start with this. Um, I'd like to talk to you about your music first, then we're going to delve in a little bit deeper, okay? Okay, now, was um, music an important part of your life growing up, or did you discover it later? Actually, Sandy, my mom and dad and my sister all play music. My dad played every string instrument, oh. and they were all, uh, they played music all the time in the house. But I was the unmusical one. I would sit, we had a big table in the kitchen, and they would sit around playing music, and I would sit under the kitchen, and, and, you know, underneath the table where the legs were, and I would just sit there, and I would listen under the table. And I remember I, it was hard for me sometimes, because my dad used to sing a song called Old Blue, which was later a, a, a song that Elvis Presley recorded. Um, actually, not Old Blue, Old Shep. Old Shep, oh yes, I know. Old that Shep, okay. when I was a kid, an old Shep was a pup. Well, I don't know if any of your listeners have ever heard that song. To this day, I cannot sing that song without just weeping. Sandy, I would sit under the table, under this big oak table, and put my fingers in my ears like this, and close my eyes because I couldn't bear to hear the end of that song, where, of course, the dog goes to heaven, mm -hmm. summer land. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, it wasn't until I was about, well, I, I had an experience at seven years old. I went to see um, Cinderella, I think it was, you know, the Disney cartoon. Mm -hmm. And when I came home, I decided to go upstairs and have a bath. So I was sitting in the bathtub, and I was about seven, maybe eight years old. And I remember going, I know you, I walked with you once upon a dream. And I went, oh, I can do that. So then nothing, nothing more until I was about 17 years old in high school. <laughs> and I was the only kid that had a guitar at home, and there was a part in a high school play for somebody playing the guitar. So I borrowed my dad's guitar for this play, and of course I was hideous. He showed me a few chords, but I was hideous. And... Um, and that's how it started, really, right then, during that play, mm -hmm. learning how to play a few chords and realizing, oh, this isn't so hard, I can do this. Well, and then the pleasure fun. that came from it. And then, of course, I couldn't, I wasn't a good enough guitar player to learn anybody else's song, so I had to write my own, so I started writing songs right then. <laughs> oh, awesome. Yep. Well, that's... <laughs> That's Laziness. I mean, it's just, oh. it's been my greatest, it's been my greatest talent. Isn't that fun? I love that. Well, uh, let me see. Well, I think you kind of answered my next question of when did you become interested in singing and learning to play an instrument. So I think that's awesome. <laughs> that's, and here you are. That it kind of happened just by accident, uh -huh. you know. But I, in a way, after a while when you've been playing, I went to college to be an art major. I wanted to oh. illustrate. Uh, I wanted to be a wildlife illustrator. Oh. And it's really strange. The minute I started playing the guitar and writing songs, that same energy that I would have taken to draw, mm -hmm. I haven't drawn since then. Oh. It all goes, the same energy mm -hmm. goes into writing songs. And when I realized that I was actually better at writing songs than I was at drawing, then, oh. uh, I, I mean, and it was almost like a calling. It was just mm -hmm. a gentle calling, that still small voice inside saying, go this way, go this way. Isn't that fun? Yeah. Well, they let you know yeah. what your purpose is. <laughs> yep. Oh, how wonderful. If we're lucky, they do. Yes, I know so <laughs> many people, don't you know so many people who are still looking for that mm -hmm. thing? Mm -hmm. And I think that the, I think the best way to find that, this, this is just sharing with you, but is to whatever brings you the most joy. Exactly. Fix your, fix your heart there mm -hmm. and go for it. You well, know, it I may not be your advice. job, may not be your job, but if it could be your job, mm -hmm. go for it. That's wonderful advice, advice <laughs> from a very wise and sage person. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, have you regularly sang other types of music, um, musical genres like rock or gospel or, or rap? <laughs> you know, or you <laughs> laugh, but I'm telling you, I came out here, I ran off from Pennsylvania where I was born. Uh, I went down to work at the, the Bloomsburg Fair, which is this huge fair. It's a, a very, very big fair, uh, almost like the Minneapolis State Fair, but it's a county fair in Pennsylvania. And they have horse races there. And we worked for Big Joe Ryan underneath the grandstand selling jewelry. <laughs> and I worked across the way from this hippie guy selling psychedelic posters. Okay. And we saw each other across the aisle, and, well, we fell in love. Oh, Tur cool. <laughs> Turns out he was a psychedelic rock and roll guitar player. Okay. And he talked me into running off with him to go to California to uh, go to a, a commune, a hippie commune, Flower Children. And we were going to be in a psychedelic rock and roll band, and in fact we were. And in fact, we did that oh, for a number fun. of years. Yeah, we were. We were. We had this horrible name. We were called Office. Oh, <laughs> this was after. You, I don't know if anybody out there's ever been in a band, but you have. You get together in your band, and then you try to find a name. Okay. And it just goes back and forth until we finally just threw up our hands and went, "Oh, let's just say we're the Office." <laughs> oh, isn't that fun? Yeah. I love that. So we became the Office, but it was psychedelic rock and roll, and then, of course, from there, I um, I was very interested in in many many kinds of music, blues and folk. Uh, predominantly rock mm -hmm. and roll. Okay. These genres. I wasn't uh, then. Rap was not so. Was yeah, not so. But you know, I right. really actually some of that I actually like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If the poetry's good, if they're right. not cursing every five. Right. Seven, not that I have anything against cursing, <laughs> yeah, as you right. well know. But, <laughs> <laughs> but. But I mean, it gets a little old. Sure. You know, right. And and the violence in that music. Of course, mm -hmm. there's a lot of anger with the inner, in, inner cities. Um, I used to have a friend. Uh, who said, you know, some of these people's feet never touch the earth their whole lives. It's always concrete or asphalt. Oh, okay, their sure. Their feet never touch the yeah. earth. Yeah, uh-huh. And I'll be they're darned. completely okay. separated from our mother. Mm. Well, that's okay. So I anger. understand that, Anger sure. happens. Poverty, mm -hmm. anger, mm -hmm. you know. that. Well, that what thing. is the genre that you sing now for your wonderful music, which she, we have a, a, her CD right here? What is the genre that you uh, sing now? Well, for many years, you know, I was known as a country singer, and mm -hmm. I still am. Mm -hmm. But this music is the music that I've always written, I've always done, and now they call it Americana. Oh, okay. And it's a, sort of a uh -huh. blend of folk and bluegrass and mm -hmm. blues and rock and roll. It's a lot of different things tied together, and what I have found is when I play it for my country audiences, they love it and they embrace it. They do. So, because it's not so far from country. Mm -hmm. It's not so far from folk music. Right. It's not so far from bluegrass. It just has influences. And I think that's what music does. Music brings people together mm -hmm. and genres come together. Right now, I think you could hardly tell modern country music from uh, 50s rock and roll or 60s rock and roll or oh. even 70s rock and roll. Okay. It's, sure. a, it's a very different uh, form than it was in the 40s and 50s. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's just very interesting. That is so cool. Well, how long did it take for your career to take off? Oh, Sandy, I was the old lady of country music. They were horrified. It, I was a 36-year-old waitress, and I remember it was People magazine or Time magazine. It was a, some big magazine says, what have we come to when the great white hope of country music is a 36-year-old waitress? Oh, oh. And I thought, well, <laughs> Oh my gosh! Me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. But uh, I was 36 years old when I got my first record deal with CBS Records in 1979. Well, good for you. So I was, uh, you know, they figured uh, they like you to get you when you're, and you know, it's true now too. It is a very young business. A lot of young people. I was very happy to see Loretta Lynn with the president the other day sure. getting an award. <laughs> that was that was pretty yeah. cool. And a lot of um, country music is a wonderful form. Blues is the same way. You can really mm. get old in these forms of music. You didn't used to be able to get old in rock and roll, but now you can. Mm, yeah. Look at the Stones. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> still kicking butt. <laughs> they and are. And Willie Nelson, holy oh, cow. Oh yeah. Willie still does high kicks on stage. Does he really? Oh, oh I just goodness. love him. He is. I think Willie is is a, is is probably one of my favorite 
role models in the entertainment oh. business. Mm -hmm. He cares about the earth. He runs mm -hmm. his mm -hmm. buses on biodiesel. He went, stood up before Congress for the sake of our wild horses to try to get people to open their eyes and say, mm -hmm. do you know 80% of us uh, want to preserve and protect our wild horses mm -hmm. and our government simply isn't listening to us. And I think that's, I think that's a problem all the time mm -hmm. with our government when 80% of us want to do anything. I mean, 80% of us don't like to do anything else except maybe breathe mm -hmm. sure. altogether. Mm -hmm. So um, Willie has always been at the forefront, and I appreciate artists who do that and who sure. are political. I hear all these people say, oh, celebrities should never be political. You know what? Musicians have always been political. Mm -hmm. Always. Mm -hmm. Always. And people who do what you do have always been political. Great leaders have always consulted sensitives to get direction in their lives. And also, the, you know, in the old days, the minstrels that went from one castle to the other were mm -hmm. the ones who carried the news about politics. Right, yeah. So don't tell me that we shouldn't be political, because that's what we are. <laughs> I don't care what you think. <laughs> You're wonderful. Sorry. You are just <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> well, what is the name of your recording company or label that you record under? This confuses everybody. <laughs> the, my, my own little record company now that I have, because I'm independent, which is why most of y'all think I'm dead. <laughs> oh, oh. Um, this, my record company is called Song Dog, and that is the Indian name for coyote. Song Dog. Oh, yes. So okay. that's, this, this uh, CD was the first uh, one that I ever did for Song Dog Records, and it, we did this one in... 2004 and revised it in about 2006 and it still it just sells and sells and oh, sells and I am so grateful this for this record and greatest I, CD you I, ever want to listen to I just well I'm grateful to it I'll tell you it puts groceries on the table oh. for me thank God <laughs> it's as an one. independent artist you have to understand well time sure. and again time and again you've been living that Lacey J Dalton indoor camping experience <laughs> <laughs> you are just <laughs> wonderful <laughs> All well, right. you know I just love you. Well, <laughs> well thank you. I love you too, J Lacey. You are just you are just so much fun. Did you so just about fun. call me Jill? I was just about ready to call you Jill. Do you yes. know what? And you don't even know that that is was my birth name. My yes, mother, I do. You told me. Oh, did I tell That's you? That's why I was oh. just about ready to slip. <laughs> it's not really a slip because uh, I am now Lacey Jill. Dalton, okay. they asked me what the J stands for. That was the oh, okay. name my mother gave me, and my mm -hmm. mother called me Lacey and Jill interchangeably, mm -hmm. so I guess it's okay. Oh, how fun. Yeah. Well, I just love you, too. You are, you are, this is one obviously <laughs> wonderful person. All right, let's see. Um, now, you sing for different benefits and, and events. Can you tell us about a particularly wonderful, awesome event that you perform for? Well, of course, I'm going to tell you. The, <laughs> but my first love, of course, is always uh, wild horses. And we, we did a wonderful benefit up at Piper's Opera House two years ago for, uh, at, at that time, Bonnie Matten was the president of the Wild Horse Preservation League. And they were kind of, they, along with uh, many of the other wild horse groups, and I got together and we did a show up at Piper's Opera with David John and the Comstock Cowboys oh, and Richard Alloyan, nice. our great cowboy poet here, mm -hmm. and a lot of other wonderful poets. Uh, Harold Roy Miller, Willis Lamb was there. Oh, uh huh. And we just, I mean, it was, um, it was a cause that I really care about, mm -hmm. and it's a cause that I uh, will always be there to, to uh, pull for because. Mm -hmm. um, I love I love our wild horses. I mm -hmm. think they're sacred, mm -hmm. and they are. <laughs> uh, and uh, I think we need to preserve and protect them. And that I'm, a great part of my life is spent doing that. Also, I do remember some very wonderful shows that we've done for our veterans, and I really like doing the shows for the veterans. I think some, especially the Vietnam veterans, were never really thanked for their service, mm -hmm. and and that has caused terrible scars in some of these men, not all of them, mm -hmm, sure, but, but in, um, in many of them. Some of them were spit upon when they came back oh. to the, yeah, and in fact, Bob, who was my boyfriend, mm -hmm. had that happen to him. And I know a couple of other people. I've had a couple of Vietnam veteran boyfriends, mm -hmm. and um, that was a terrible experience. And I just want to say right now, thank all of you soldiers, men and women, for your service. 
and especially want to thank uh, the Vietnam veterans and of course Second World War in Korea, the Forgotten War. All of you, thank you so much for your service and God bless each and every one of you. Couldn't have said it better. <laughs> you okay? Yep. Okay. <laughs> now, do you write most of your songs and the lyrics too? Sandy, I do write cool. most. <laughs> I do write most of them, mm -hmm. at the lyrics and the music. Mm -hmm. But I also, uh, I brought you a CD today yes, you did. <laughs> of a song that I heard. I heard a woman singing this song. Emily Sandé is the writer with a few other people around her. She's a wonderful British artist. She has a huge hit on this song called Next to Me. It is a big hit on the internet, and it was a big pop hit in England. Ooh. And I, th and when I heard the lyric, I thought, I have to sing this song. Aww. It's such a rare lyric. Okay. You will find him drinking at the table. Rolling dice or staying out till three. You won't ever find him be unfaithful. You will find him, you will find him next to me. And that's how that lyric Got the goes. Shivers. <laughs> you know, the Whoa. next the next line is um, you won't find him trying to chase the devil for money, fame, or power out of greed. You won't ever find him where the rest go. You will find him. You will find him next to me. Oh. And nice. I thought that was such a rare mm -hmm. lyric, mm -hmm. a male affirming to actually affirm. A lot of the guys in my band, for instance, are very faithful to their wives. Mm -hmm. They get hit on a lot on the road. And I see mm -hmm. them, and I see them not go for that easy thing. Mm -hmm. I see them take a take a, a different stance and, and respect their marriages. And oh, I nice. watch this all around me and I appreciate it and I think it's very undersung about. Mm -hmm. So Emily Sande, thank you for your wonderful song and it is out now. You can get it on CD Baby. And uh, I brought Sandy a copy yes. of it today. I can't wait to listen to I it. I hope you'll like it. Mm, thank you so but, much for that. Well, you know, that's I was just saying, I don't always write all my own material. Mm -hmm. If I find a song, um, in fact, I just started doing a song by our friend Richard Aloyan, who is one of Nevada's greatest uh, poets and songwriters, uh, especially here in northern Nevada. Just He sounds like Marty Robbins. If you haven't heard oh. Richard Aloyan, do go hear him because he's wonderful. But I've started doing a song that he wrote about the wild horses called The Escape. It's about a helicopter chase of a stallion, and in the end of the song, the horse gets away. Oh my gosh, that sounds like an awesome song. And so you're putting the music to his poetry lyric? No, he oh. actually he wrote the music, he wrote oh. the he wrote the poetry and he's a wonderful poet. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it is on our Wild Horse Crossing CD, which is also available at CD Baby, and that is a project where a lot of us got together, we gave 100% of our performances, 100% of the publishing of our songs, 100% of that CD goes right to the Wild Horses to support them. Wild Horse Crossing, it's called. And so you know when you get that, we only keep enough money, which is about a buck and a quarter to make each one, sure, mm -hmm. um, to, to keep doing that. And well, that's, that's been a project of many, many years, yeah. and it included David John and the Comstock Cowboys, oh. and Richard Alloyan and Bean Souza. I mean, there were so many wonderful people mm -hmm. on that, on that uh, CD. It's oh. really, Stephen Swinford and Bean Souza produced it, and uh, they did all of that work. Uh, we had a donation for the studio time, but other than that, everything oh, was donated by these artists. And they're really? just, oh. I mean, it's just wonderful. This is wonderful. And where can you get this? Well, all your CDs, you may as well go ahead and, and promote your, your uh, contact sites. Amazon and CD Baby. And I think that the Wild Horse Crossing CD is only available on CD Baby. Okay. But most of everything else is available on both Amazon.com and CD Baby. Oh, well, everybody, you have to go uh, get these albums. You're going to love them. <laughs> well, I hope, they, oh. I hope they enjoy them. I sure enjoyed making them, this one especially, because... A lot of the records that I've made in the past, if, I, if I'm if i listening, somebody puts them on when I'm in the ha in their home, I listen and I just kind of cringe and think, oh. gee, I wish I'd done that differently, or gee, oh. I just really don't. This one's a little different. Mm -hmm. This one I made exactly the way I wanted to make it in my home studio with oh. my band. 
Oh, nice. And okay. so even though now, though it was made in 2004 and mm -hmm. things have changed, you know, so it has, you know, it certainly sounds like it was made then, um, but it's still pleasing to me. And I mm -hmm. still am, I, I think when you do something the way you really want to do it, mm -hmm. and it's 100% the way you want to do it, mm -hmm. I think no matter then what happens, mm -hmm. you're always going to be pleased, at least you did it your way. Sure. This, oh, of course. This CD, the Last Wild Place Anthology CD, I did it my way. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> it really comes through. You're, the spiritualism in this CD really comes through your voice, the music, the lyrics. This is an incredible, incredible CD. It, you, it's a must-have for your collection, that's Thank for you, sure. Sa Thank you so much, you Sandy. Thank very you. Very much hear, well, in your voice, like I was saying, your voice, the, the inflections, the lyrics. Very, very spiritual. Where do you get your inspirations while before and while you're writing your wonderful songs? <laughs> I am sure that it's the same thing that you are experiencing when you give people readings with your mm -hmm. stones and the different ways that you mm -hmm. do uh, your readings. I don't feel that I'm writing I, I, the songs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel that that inspiration comes from spirit. Mm -hmm. And it comes through and you just write it down and you write it down to the best of your ability. And sometimes I have a song on here called Little Boy Blue, uh -huh. which mm -hmm. I wrote about my son or for mm -hmm. my son. Mm -hmm. It came to me in a dream. Oh, okay. A, a lot of it came to me in a dream. And in the dream, a guy was saying to me, you know, if you'd practice more, it wouldn't be so hard to give these things to you. <laughs> That's how fun. Okay. Oh, yeah, they let you know, don't they? <laughs> it was just like, oh, okay. So I woke up. I happened to have a guitar by the bed, which I don't usually. I just happened to have it there, and I started playing it. And my husband at the time said, I said, is somebody else's song? Have you heard this song before? Hey, little boy, I'm so proud of you. He said, no, but you better write it down. Oh. So I got up and wrote it down, and literally in 15 minutes, I wrote this song. You're kidding. No, it just oh. came It just came through. There are songs that do that. They will just simply come through. There are other songs that I get an idea for. There's a song also on this CD called Standing Knee Deep in the River and Dying of Thirst. Yes. It took me 30 years to write it. Oh, I'll be. I kept part. working on it and uh -huh. working on it and changing it and you know, mm -hmm. fixing it, and then my uh, co-producer on this CD, Tom Bocci, helped me edit it because it was really, really long. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And um, we wanted to have it for this project, and I said, I can't edit it. It's like cutting off my baby's arm. I've oh. been working on this thing for so long. And he helped me edit it, and I think he did a wonderful job of guiding me uh, as to what I could leave out and what I mm -hmm. could leave in on that particular song. And it is, is a song with a spiritual message when it begin began to come to me years ago, I thought about a kid in a hotel room, uh, a rock and roll kid, sitting alone with a guitar, probably drunk, probably on drugs, thinking about not continuing his life. Looking at this room, this kind of not very nice room in an old hotel in San Francisco, and I thought, I'm going to write a song for people who get to that place where they have to ask themselves, can I go on? Must, should I go on or should I not? And I question, in the song I say, you've got to ask yourself, am I standing knee deep in the river and dying of thirst? Mm. It's, a, it's a very moving song. All of your songs on this CD happen to be very moving. They will bring tears to your eyes. <laughs> they will bring shivers to your skin. Very, very spiritual music. Okay, um, can you please give us your contact information again on where to get your CDs or how to get a hold of you, um, perhaps you, to perform or just to say hi? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Call me. I'll come to your house and do a performance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm independent now. We do everything. Oh, you're fun. Uh, uh, if you would like to uh, reach us, you can reach me through bob at LaceyJDalton.com. Mm -hmm. And we do have a website, www.lacyjdalton.com. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Everybody's got to get on your website and order her CDs. Oh, you are going to love them. Thank you so much for being part of Psychic Creations today. 
what an awesome guest you've been and what an awesome friend you are. <laughs> Right back at you, oh, Sandy. Oh, thank you so, so much. And I want to thank everybody. I'm so happy for you that you have your show now. Oh, thanks. And I want to encourage you to get everybody you know to watch this because this is a cool show. Oh, well, <laughs> thank you very much. And thank you for mentioning that because my shows can be seen on YouTube, which is the channel name is called Psychic Creations. Thank you so much for joining our show today. And... We'll see you next show. Waking in your magic with our music and our 